Five Terrifying Things from the Deep Dark Woods There's something special about the serenity, scenic views, and peace and quiet that you can find in the woods. Yet, at the same time, this place can emanate a distinct, creepy vibe unlike anywhere else. Depending on where you are, who you're with, and what you find, will make you easily feel one way or the other. Here are five terrifying things from the deep dark woods. Number five, Missing People Shrine. Regardless of your culture, ethnicity, or religion, we all have certain practices to observe in order to remember and honor our loved ones who have passed or gone missing. It's in our nature to find ways to ensure their memories live on, and in this story, it happens to be a very creepy display no matter where you come from. In 2016, a man named James Rankin took to social media to post what he calls the dead-ass creepiest thing he had ever seen. So creepy and so disturbing that it even prompted him to call authorities to take a look into the matter. The video post has since gone viral, garnering the same troubled response from those who have seen it. In the clip, the poster said that he was hiking alone in the woods, and while he had passed through this particular trail many times before, he had never seen this. What he found were laminated flyers showing the faces and information of several people who had gone missing, and they were attached on trees in a way that they could easily be seen by people passing by. Look what these are, Rankin exclaimed in the video as he pointed to the missing person photos. What makes them disturbing is the fact that these are photos of real people. These are individuals whose respective families and friends are probably devastated due to their disappearance. In one instance, he showed the poster of Jennifer Keys, a Florida woman who had been missing since 2006. There's also the photo of Brian Schaefer, a medical student at Ohio State University who disappeared around the same year as Keese. There's also a poster of Lauren Sperrier, a 20-year-old college student who disappeared in 2011. Rankin went on to reveal the location of the area, which is in Huntington off El Jericho Turnpike in New York. In a separate post, the trail hiker said that he reported what he found to the police and an investigation was made. It was found out that the homeowner of a nearby property took responsibility for the display. Flyers were supposed to be a part of a setup for a Halloween party. While the season had long since passed, the posters were still hanging on those trees. People who have seen the video on Facebook reacted differently, with some saying they wouldn't dare hike on that particular trail for fear that there might actually be some sinister individuals lurking around. Others said that the creepy decorations could have been installed there to scare the public away from the property. Either way, as a person just walking alone in the woods, it must have been a terrifying sight. Number 4. Blue Mountain Shooting In the land down under is where you can find the famous Blue Mountains of New South Wales, Australia. People from all around the world flock to this mountainous range to experience the exhilarating adventures that the land has to offer. The magnificent Three Sisters, the breathtaking Wentworth Falls, and the awe-inspiring views at Govett's Leap. These are but just some of the many interesting spots to check out. And though there's literally an endless array of reasons to make your stay in the Blue Mountains truly enjoyable, this recent fatal incident that happened in the area might make you think twice before visiting. On December 13, 2019, the quiet community of Blackheath, a town located near the highest point of the Blue Mountains, was shaken up by the news of a shooting incident. Two men had been critically injured during the exchange that occurred on Connett Road near the Govett's Leap lookout. It was just before dawn, the mountains were still enveloped in fog and mist when two identified men stormed the home of two unnamed victims. Residents surrounding the scene told reporters that they heard gunshots breaking up the silence of the mountains, which were followed by harrowing screams that further disturbed the early morn. 
This alarmed the townspeople, who were then also worried that they might be caught in the crossfire. Worse, they were scared of the possibility that these gunmen might randomly come into their homes and also wreak havoc. When authorities arrived, they found the two victims, ages 25 and 31, at their home fighting for their lives. The younger one incurred a wound to his lower back, while the other was shot in the torso. Both were immediately flown to a nearby hospital while still in critical condition. Meanwhile, police scoured the scene where they found a mallet, which was thought to be used to smash the windows, as well as empty shotgun shells. The suspects were seen by witnesses scurrying down the dark streets before getting into a getaway vehicle. It was later discovered that the assailants were two men who were actually acquainted with the two victims. It is yet to be known, however, what motive prompted the pair to gun down their targets. Luckily, the two men survived, and police were able to arrest the suspects and charge them with intent to murder, wounding a person with intent to cause grievous bodily harm and possession of illegal firearms. Number 3. Devon UFO Crash Site In July of 2020, the headlines of local newspapers in England were covered with a story about a man who encountered what he believes to be a UFO crash site. The site in question is in the Medden Woods in Bidford, Devon, a town in southwest England. According to Ben Landracombe, the incident occurred in the early morning when he was taking his dog for a walk. While in the woods, the Plymouth resident said in the video that he shared on social media that he noticed a large number of trees had somehow been flattened to the ground, but not in the sense that any construction may have been taking place. It looked as if something massive fell from the sky and then toppled the foliage and trees down below. He further explained that he felt something very eerie while in the area adding more to the scare of the weird sounds enveloping the place. The man later told the press that he actually recalled hearing screams and he felt like someone or something was watching him. After taking pictures, him and his companion hurried back to their camper, vowing never to return to that strange place. Having found no logical explanation for why the trees fell in that certain way, the passerby could only exclaim that this could be aliens. To make sense of the bizarre incident, the Forestry Commission of England went over to the site. A forestry spokesperson explained that the alien crash site that the man found was actually caused by what they call a wind blow. This phenomenon occurs when strong gusty winds destabilize the trees. The first ones to fall can bring down nearby trees much like that of a domino effect. The Forestry Commission, however, didn't deny the claim of this being a possible UFO landing site. In a press release, the agency said that the nation's forests are no stranger to UFO sightings. True enough, one of England's woodlands, the Rendlesham Forest in Suffolk, is the site of the very controversial 1980 UFO sightings on the Isle. A series of incidents happened near the U.S. Air Force-controlled RAF Woodbridge Air Base. It has since been closely compared to the Roswell UFO sighting in the United States. In 2016, John Burroughs, an American airman, demanded the U.S. military pay for his treatments due to an illness he claimed he had incurred due to the strange incident in Rendlesham Forest. The U.S. Air Force first class officer was apparently exposed to huge doses of radiation while he was on site investigating what appeared to be a mysterious unknown aircraft. In an interesting twist, the U.S. Veterans Association did pay for Burroughs' treatment. According to the claimant's legal counsel for the U.S. government to take responsibility of the matter seemed to suggest that something strange really happened at the time. UFO experts, meanwhile, cited this turn of events saying that the support given by the military to the former airmen have deep implications on the reality of UFOs which, at this point, are believed to be of ET origin. Number 2. The Disappearance of Jacob Gray 
Jacob Gray was an outdoorsman who grew up on the beaches of Santa Cruz, California. And according to his family, he had the tendency to do things that would often test the limits. At one time, Jacob decided to hike from his home all the way to San Francisco, which was around 75 miles away. At 22 years old, he moved to live with his grandmother, Wyoma Claire, in Port Townsend, a city in Jefferson County, Washington, where he continued to hike and spend time outdoors. Then, on April 5th, 2017, the young man departed Port Townsend alone on his bike that was towing a trailer full of camping gear and supplies. His plan was to travel east towards Vermont to see his older brother, Micah, who was stationed there in the U.S. Coast Guard. The trip, as he told everyone in his family, could be very lengthy. He figured it might take him at least two years to finally reach the northeastern part of the country. The following day after he embarked on his journey, his bike, bike trailer, wallet, identification, and most of his camping equipment were found abandoned near the Sole Duck River, which is part of the Olympic National Park in Washington. The circumstances from which his things were found piqued the interest of rangers who passed by the area. They found a bow and some arrows which were sticking in the ground. Authorities initially thought the cyclist might have decided to take a short walk up the river, It was on the next day, though, on April 7th, when they finally assumed that the owner could have been missing. For more than a year, there were no more clues, no evidence as to what happened to Jacob. He had simply vanished into thin air. Within that period of his disappearance, authorities, including his father, were doing their best to find him, but to no avail. There were fears that the cyclist may have succumbed to the elements His father, however, remained hopeful that he was still alive. A journalist named John Billman would later include Jacob's story in his book, The Cold Vanish, Seeking the Missing in North America's Wildlands. In this book, the Gray family expressed their concern about the possibility that the young man may have been dealing with some mental health issues. It turns out that while growing up, He witnessed his family getting torn apart due to his parents' divorce. He also had to live with a relative because they lost their house in Santa Cruz. He was having trouble adulting, his mother said in a later interview. In August of 2018, Jacob's skeletal remains were found by park officials, scattered in a remote part of the Daniel J. Evans Wilderness area of the Olympic National Park. The spot from which he was found was at least 15 miles from where he left his bike and gear. Despite his family finally getting closure, there were still a lot of questions hanging in the air. Why were there four arrows stuck in the ground? And what made him divert from his plan to go east instead of west without informing anyone? The coroner's report said that he died of hypothermia. Did he intend to kill himself, or was it just a terrible accident? Number 1. McDowell Family Murder Case On June 21, 1989, a 23-year-old man from Delaware County brutally killed all four members of his family. And this incident is thought to be one of the most horrifying crimes to ever happen in the area. The person responsible was Ebon McDowell, and on that day he murdered his father, Robert, who was 59, Elizabeth, his mother, who was 48, his younger brother Daniel, who was 22, and grandfather Charles, who was 78. The family were at the grandfather's cabin in the woods, found just outside the village of Stamford, about 50 miles southwest of Albany, New York. Police who responded found the elderly man lying in his bed. The gunman's father and brother were found fallen on the ground outside of the cabin near a pond, The mother's body, meanwhile, was later recovered from the depths of the water. Authorities surmise that, apart from the grandfather, Ebon's immediate family members had all tried to flee from him. The bodies were discovered the following day, Thursday morning, by a social worker who found a note that was left on the front door of Mr. McDowell's office. Robert was a lawyer, and according to reports, the note was written in such a way 
that Ebon wanted the message to be interpreted as if it came from his father. Right after the discovery of the victims, a search operation ensued. It didn't take long for the Delaware County officials to hunt down the only suspect they had in mind. Police squadrons, sniffing dogs, and even a helicopter were deployed and ultimately led to them tracking down the young man. He was found just a few miles north of the crime scene but stood his ground as officers began to close in. A negotiator was called to help convince the killer to surrender, but Ebon then began to fire his shotgun at authorities who had no choice but to fire back, killing the perpetrator. The people who knew the family could attest to the suspect's troubled life. In fact, the testimony of those affiliated to the McDowells said that Ebon had a history of mental illness, which grew worse over the years. He was made to spend time in various psychiatric programs after he was diagnosed with schizophrenia. Just months before the horrific incident, the younger McDowell was arrested after he attacked his father with an axe. And even before that, Robert reported having been punched in the face by his son. Four innocent lives were taken up in the woods in New York that day. As to what exactly caused Ebon to pull the trigger, no one will ever truly know. So there were five terrifying things from the deep dark woods. These recorded accounts of disturbing incidents are proof that despite the peace and quiet, the wilderness can sometimes be a very dangerous and scary place. If you enjoyed watching this video, then please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell because every week we're putting out two new videos for you to check out. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you soon.